Good afternoon. My name is Ben Davidson, founder of Space Weather News and the Mobile Observatory Project, and websites like spaceweathernews.com and quakewatch.net. Today I'll be presenting evidence that the latest earthquake forecasting method is working, most notably in a focus here, seven consecutive magnitude 6 or greater earthquakes to strike Earth did so within areas put on alert within just 24 hours of the event. Now we're not at the point where we could say, call out exactly a magnitude 6.8 earthquake to strike 18 kilometers below the surface at 11.41 a.m. on so-and-so a day in a specific city of the world. However, we absolutely can identify the areas of active fault zones most likely to take magnitude 6 and larger earthquakes over the following days, which is generally the threshold magnitude where earthquakes begin to be significant. This presentation is made in preparation for the release of the Disaster Prediction app, which puts this model into the hands of anyone with a smartphone or tablet device, along with providing warnings of solar storms and other space weather events. The two go together not only because geomagnetically induced currents and earthquakes are both naturally occurring hazards, but because forecasting both these events involves watching the sun. Let's begin. We are currently in year number two of our earthquake forecasting efforts. Year two began on November 8th, 2016. But let's start with some background on year one, which began a year earlier on November 8th, 2015. We engaged in a two-week trial period where we noted areas of Earth likely to take magnitude six or larger earthquakes within one week. We made six crude forecasts and three were successful. In those three successes, six total magnitude six or larger earthquakes occurred, two in each, like when we put Chile and Peru on alert, and the very next day, two magnitude 6.9 struck Chile, or in our first watch ever, when Sumatra, Vietnam, and Japan were put on alert, and a magnitude 6.6 .6 and 6.7 struck Sumatra and Japan within just five days. We named countries or other areas of fault lines and provided no visual map of alerted areas at that time. We took the next months off of public forecasting and studied what we had done and tried to make some adjustments. It was at this time that we also began to integrate a modification of Claude de Blot's energy transmigration theory into the forecasting system. This allowed us to track energy both above and now below the ground, provided one is kept up with the most recent literature on electromagnetic precursors to earthquakes. We began predicting earthquakes again at the implied request of USGS physicist Jeffrey Love on August 11, 2016. From then until November 8th, 11 more hits were recorded, and the watch success rate overall increased to 61.1% from 50% in the two-week trial. Our biggest struggle at the outset was the window of time. We'd see energy, call out a region, but watch that energy begin to shift. So, by the second week of October 2016, nearing the end of our first year of forecasting, we were producing daily alerts and we realized the value in offering alert maps for visual edification. This remains our practice today and allows us to better gauge the accuracy of the forecasting. So here's where we stand in terms of our efforts each day. We'll post alerts roughly once a day by monitoring the flow of energy in the global electric circuit via atmospheric phenomena and deep earthquakes we've termed blot echoes. We must limit these alerts to small sections of active fault lines and yet manage to capture an exceptionally high number of magnitude 6 or greater earthquakes by comparison within those small alerted regions. Well, how do we know what a small segment is and how do we know what the chances would be for us to just get lucky on any given day? Well, now that you have some background, let's move forward there. By determining how likely our alert zones are to be successful based on simple random luck, we can determine if the actual success rate is significant. In most years, there are about 140 to 170 magnitude 6 or larger earthquakes, but that number is vastly inflated by aftershocks, and when you consider that often we will see two or more such events within a 24-hour period, we are actually left with only about 90 days per year that take magnitude 6 or larger main shock earthquakes. This means we should expect a magnitude 6 or higher earthquake day about once every four days. 
when you hear once every three days, that is a lack of understanding and not accounting for either the aftershocks or the frequency with which multiple regions get hit on the same day. So this means that just by random luck, every day has slightly lower than a 25% chance of seeing a magnitude 6 or larger earthquake strike somewhere, anywhere in the world. That is an important figure. One day at random, anywhere on Earth, 25% chance of success. From there, we come to the most active fault lines of Earth. These regions take 97% or more of the magnitude 6 or larger earthquakes every year. Forgive the crudeness of those lines. Although the Pacific portion of the Ring of Fire is less than half the area, it takes a little more than 60% of the biggest quakes. And if you include the Indian Ocean, South China Sea portions of the Ring of Fire, it's closer to 70 or 80%. So 25% per day for the whole world, the Pacific Ring of Fire has about a 15% chance per day, and the rest of the world faults have about a 10% chance per day. So picture that like this. Next up, we'll see what an 11% chance per day might look like. And after that, restricting alerts to these faults gives you just a 5.5% chance of being correct by random luck on any given day. Were you consistently to alert at 5% chance of success per day over an entire year, you'd get a hit about once every 20 days by random luck. Now, during a period where we posted alert maps every day, from October 30th through November 24th, a time that bridges our first and second year periods, all seven magnitude 6 earthquakes and larger struck our alert zones. These alert zones each had between a 2 and 4% chance of success each day, and so in the period of approximately 26 days there, we should have probably gotten lucky once, maybe not, but to get two would have been very unlikely by random luck. Since we provide daily updates of where Earth's energy is likely to trigger an earthquake, an earthquake area must be alerted on our most recent map, or it is a miss. It doesn't matter if all of a sudden we called out Washington, D.C. for an earthquake, something we are unlikely to ever do, and it gets a magnitude 5.9 that day, which is extraordinarily rare for the area. And then the first day we don't have Washington, D.C. on alert, it gets hit with a magnitude 6.8. That would be a miss on both accounts because the first one was not a magnitude 6 and the second one occurred when the region was not on alert. Every opportunity to play devil's advocate has been taken when attempting to plunge a shovel into virgin soil here. So, remember quickly, from October 30th through November 24th, we posted alerts every day and they had about a 2 to 4% chance per day of success just by random luck. And in that 26 day period, we maybe should have gotten lucky once. We got all seven magnitude 6 earthquakes and let's take a look at that here. So since you could highlight this entire map and get a hit once or twice a week, having about a 25% chance per day and hopefully you remember what it looks like reduced and reduced further. This was our alert map on October 29th, 2016, the day before that 26 day period began. We have been posting these to Twitter because they are public, recorded permanently, officially timestamped so you know when it was posted, and when you have more than 10,000 people following your tweets, as we do, there are screenshots and shares and retweets of every post within moments. That information couldn't be deleted or changed if I tried. Most people saw the magnitude 6.1 that struck Italy on October 26th, a few days earlier, as their main shock. But that's not what Earth Energy was saying. And beyond a mere red line, we used our alert star for the first time. We couldn't have been more sure a bigger one was coming, as even the energy brewing in the Pacific was clearly connected to that spot in Europe. This map had a 3% chance of success per day by random luck, and of course it was just one day later that Italy was struck with a bigger magnitude 6.5 earthquake that took down the Basilica of St. Benedict and other epic structures in the region. The earth was quiet for a few days, and on November 4th, just after midnight, this alert map was posted. We had a small alert in Indonesia and was looking ahead to where it might migrate in the coming days, but the larger star over to the right, the primary star, was in Chile. 
only a 3% chance of success per day here, and it was just a few hours later that the magnitude 6.4 struck. Luckily, it was significant, but not terribly damaging, as it was 90 kilometers deep. Chile had actually been on alert for a day or two leading up to this, but not with the alert star. On November 11th, we posted this map. Two areas with alert stars. Only one of them was important the next day, the northern one, near Japan, where a 6.2 struck, but that was also quite deep and not very damaging. We were able to post an update shortly afterwards as we watched every ounce of earthquake energy disappear from the northern hemisphere and focus on the south. This was the other alert star from the previous day, kept on alert the next day, and I'd like to note that other southern areas on alert here in South America did get hit with a magnitude 6.2 that was downgraded to 5.7. Despite the downgrade, it was still the largest seismically active zone other than New Zealand that day, but of course the big story was New Zealand, a magnitude 7.8. It hit the area that got the alert star two days before and which was kept on alert the next day within 24 hours of that event itself as all of the earthquake energy shifted to the southern hemisphere. Moving on. After about a week of silence, we had the most covered alert map of year number two so far, a 5% chance of getting lucky just by random chance per day. The southern fourth of the Argentinian alert zone was struck hours later by a magnitude 6.4. The very next night, we made a modification to the new map we had made hours earlier, which had not included Japan, but we saw reason to extend the alert which had only covered the Kamchatka Peninsula of Russia down to the north portions of Japan. Within just two hours, Japan indeed got hit with the magnitude 6.9 earthquake. That's the one that prompted fears of a tsunami near the Fukushima disaster back in 2011. The very next magnitude 6 did not wait long. Here was the most recent map posted before it occurred, three minutes before it occurred. The blue arrow, once again, is a look ahead rather than part of this alert map area, and Central America was on alert there as magnitude 7 struck off the coast of El Salvador. In fairness, Central America had indeed been on watch in the previous map as well. There was activity above and below the ground indicative of strong earthquakes to come. That was every single magnitude 6 or larger main shock earthquake that occurred from the end of October through November 24th. A magnitude 6.6 .6 that struck Tajikistan on the 25th ended that streak at 7. Seven magnitude 6 or larger earthquakes in a row struck our alert zones. These maps had between a 2 and 5% chance of success on any given day. So again, let's play devil's advocate. If all of those maps had a maximum 5% chance per day, we probably should have gotten lucky once. And if we did it every day of an entire year, we'd get about 18 of the magnitude 6 or larger earthquakes, or about 1 every 20 days. So far in year 2, the numbers are a bit skewed because of the streak of 7 in a row, but even outside of that time, the success rate is well above what would be expected. We didn't feel the need to make a map for just the Philippines or Indonesia back on October 18th before the streak began. A magnitude 6.6 .6 struck Indonesia the next day. This map from early on October 21st of this year had less than a 2% chance of success, but three hours later, a magnitude 6.2 struck Japan in the alert zone. By the way, looking back to the first Italian six-pointer in October, which we missed, if it is indeed determined to be a foreshock of the larger earthquake which we got on October 30th, which started the streak of seven, then the streak would actually have been nine in a row, and include these last two we just saw in Indonesia and Japan. In October and November as a whole, 14 magnitude six or larger earthquakes occurred. 11 of them struck these small alert regions within 24 hours of them being put on alert in the most recent posting and one of the misses might have actually been a foreshock. For the record, before the start of October this year, we were not doing alerts every day. There were only three alerts posted in August and September of this year. All three were successful, capturing five magnitude six or larger earthquakes in the process, like this one on September 7th, which saw two magnitude six events within just one week.
This forecasting will continue as part of the Disaster Prediction app by Space Weather News, which is launching this month, December 2016, with statistical tracking and background information available at QuakeWatch.net. The earthquake forecasting method will be presented in its most current form at Observing the Frontier 2017. The third iteration of the conference by Space Weather News will take place on April 8th and 9th, 2017, and more information on speakers and presentation topics can be found at observatoryproject.com OTF. This is merely the first step in a long process that began decades ago when the first aftershock was recognized as being resultant of one that came before it. We cannot yet advise nations or individuals to act and commit resources based on our forecasts. That's yet. We cannot call out individual cities and cannot often tell when it's going to be a magnitude 6 versus a magnitude 8. Yet. This is the first baby step, and as impossible as it seems, it is real. You absolutely can monitor the flow of energy to and from the ground, and this information can be used to narrow the area of active faults most likely to rupture in a significant way. Somewhere far on the horizon of the timeline, there is a city that will be ready for a big earthquake or tsunami, and many lives will be saved. For the record, we began this almost daily map updating on October 11, 2016, with an average daily chance of about 4% per day of getting lucky just by random, which would give you about 15 to 20 earthquakes over an entire year if you did it every day just by random luck. In the 50 days since October 11th, we've already got 11. Thank you for your time.